What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, well, this played out pretty flawlessly. The pattern continues to repeat itself. On Friday, I made a video after the little bit of a bounce that we had in the market saying I was going to keep a close eye on the volume Monday and Tuesday. It's going to be a very good indication on whether buyers are stepping in or sellers have just exhausted a little bit. They're waiting for the price to ride up and eventually take the market down even further, which is clearly what you saw today. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything that happened from the fundamentals, looking at the charts, and also so you can prepare for this when it happens again, because when we are in a downtrend like we are currently in, the bounces and the relief rallies that we have, they offer good room to the upside, but what you need to pay attention to to see, is this going to be a bottom? Are we coming around from this? Or is this just a quick little bounce and when to take it down? And we're also gonna go over some of the news and events that led to this. I'll break everything down for you. So let's get right into it. First off, guys, this is the five-day chart. As you can clearly see here on Friday after Thursday's late night bounce off that 385, we had a nice gap up overnight and it continued into the weekend. I stated on that video, volume, volume, volume. It always precedes price action. All right, on Monday, the average daily volume on the SPY right now is about 108 million shares. On Monday, I think we had 78 million shares traded and 83 on Tuesday or vice versa. That is not enough substance inside the market to really exhaust the sellers that you can see it by looking at the price action inside the chart and watching some of these candles that they were not explosive buyers pushing the stock price up. They really just waited let them get a little bit more room and now they could take it down even farther. As you can see, 25 points inside an indice in just a few days and they've already gotten 20 back from that. If you zoom in here, guys, and take a look at the daily chart, you can clearly see right here with 78 and 83 million. So like I said, when this happens again, because it is going to until we can really formulate a bottom, your bottom, you're going to see the volume spike be well over that at the daily average, which is 108 million. If you don't have this in your think or swim chart chart, I highly suggest you get it. If not, you could take a look at, at what current volume is on, you know, Yahoo finance or whatnot, but it always precedes price action. Now let's take a look at what exactly the sellers waited for and a couple of things I want to point out. So Today, the stock market also sank because retail sales were pretty much horrible across the board. Target, Walmart, they all you know, expressed their concerns over the supply chain. And just the fact that they're seeing slightly less demand. I think investors were a little bit shocked over the past couple of days on Walmart because I read this on CNBC and just the fact that even though Amazon had reported that there were gonna be uh, supply chain issues, there was no surprise that Walmart was going to see that, but they also did expect because prices are, are rising a little bit, that maybe consumers would just be a little bit extra cautious and try to really, really get that bottom line price. They felt Walmart was gonna you know, fare just a little bit better. Retail really brought down the market as of today. Now, Jerome Powell's speech, okay, yesterday, I was, <laughs> It was actually kind of surprised that we did actually uh, see a pop after he spoke. And the reason being is because he had stated very clearly that they're prepared to raise rates more quickly and higher if price pressures fail to fade. They're gonna continue to keep an eye on CPI, although that they need, the Fed needs the market to, to really stay afloat. The Fed cannot have the market crash. The reason behind that is the Fed has interjected themselves so much okay, inside the economy because of everything that they've done over the years, that they're the only ones that can inevitably save the market and save the economy, all right? They need to raise interest rates so when the next crisis happens, they can lower interest rates. And the only way to be able to raise interest rates is to keep the economy somewhat afloat, okay? So just keep that in the back of your mind. However, Powell, I think a lot of people, especially after the two Fed presidents spoke earlier, really thought he was gonna be a little bit more dovish than he was. And he was very hawkish saying that, no, we are fully fighting this and we are going to you know, take every measurement that we need to make in order to ensure, okay, that inflation does not continue to get even farther out of control. All right, I think investors were a little bit concerned with that when you saw it. That's why when he was speaking, immediately the price action went down and did begin to cover at the end of the day. It was a very clear sign whenever you see, all right, you know, Powell in a little bit of a hawkish stance and the market just begins to climb. It's like sellers are just waiting, trying to get as much gap as they can to eventually take it down going forward. Now, with that being said, expect that 385 on the spy to continue to get tested. 
as we saw you know, the, the low as of recent, okay? And probably to break beneath that. However, and I'm gonna continue to say this, okay? When you look at the fear and greed index, we are in extreme fear of level nine. Zero is as low as we can go. We hit six, okay, a couple of days ago, as you see here, a week ago was eight, and but zero is as low as we can go. And eventually, guys, the money sitting on the sidelines is going to flow back into the market. That's the first thing. The second thing is the price, all right, price to earnings ratio is getting into a much more attractive point. We're currently sitting at about 19.81. This will adjust a little bit after the day fully closed and everything settles. But as you can see, obviously not going back into the middle 1900s where the technology era really wasn't booming, okay? And you didn't have these high tech companies trading at crazy future valuations. You can see we really flow around the 20, actually over than the 20 since, you know, the year 2000, okay? Obviously we have a little bit of a drawback after the dot-com crash, which was accelerated, you know, by, you know, the 9-11 the crash, all right, in, in a, or tragedy in, you know, in 2001. And obviously the housing crash, all right, that occurred right in 2008, 2009, but we sit around that 20 to 25, okay, PE ratio. And we're sitting at 19.81. A lot of these companies, okay, especially some beat down companies are literally trading, evaluating unless at what they have cash on hand in reserves, right? So you've seen, I've mentioned this the other day, you've seen some of these attractive high growth companies such as Upstart, which has made a 100% recovery bouncing off of $25, right? After their pretty, you know, you know poor earnings. You've seen companies like Roblox and Affirm, even some of the Chinese companies, Neo had a little bit of a rally as well. Started these high growth, starting to get some money flowing back into it. And it's been a little bit more controlled. And so it gives me the, you know, after, my it's just my personal experience is it gives me an indication that this is some of you know big you know big funds and institutions pouring money into some of these high growth companies okay because like i said the valuations the overall valuations are becoming more and more attractive so inevitably guys no i do not think that we are at the bottom i know this 385 had stuck out to me for quite some time okay but look for us to completely test that and we're going to want to see a little bit more of a base rather than just a rapid bounce but you can clearly see here once we get the rapid bounce it's a couple days of an uptrend a couple days of an uptrend we, you know we hit that resistance okay it's beautifully lined up right here around that you know 408 to 410 level and eventually just take it down even further and always remember this whenever you're you know you're you're, you're trading on any single chart volume always precedes the price action, okay? The shorter the time frame, obviously it's harder to see. The longer the time frame is much easier to see, right? You can look at a chart and see, wait a minute, we, we moved up, you know, 2%, 3%, you know, I think the QQQ was 3.7% on an indice, all right, on like 90% of, of its average daily volume. That cannot last. There's not enough buyers inside the market to be able to sustain the price to keep moving higher. And eventually they're gonna get exhausted and the sellers are waiting on the sideline just to completely capitalize on it and take the market down even further. So guys, that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.